Welcome to the Radiology Vault, an open repository for radiology educational content designed for learners and medical professionals. Presented by the Michigan Medicine Department of Radiology. Hello, I'm Dr. Stephanie Patterson from the Division of Breast Imaging at Michigan Medicine. And today I will be talking to you about basic mammography positioning. I have no disclosures. Breast cancer mortality has decreased by over 40% in the U.S., in part thanks to mammography. However, how well mammography works depends on image quality. And in a study of mammograms submitted for American College of Radiology accreditation, inadequate mammographic positioning was the most common deficiency in image quality. It's the responsibility of every radiologist who reads screening mammograms to assess image quality and to provide feedback to technologists to help them troubleshoot to optimize image quality. The goal, ultimately, of screening mammography is to image as much tissue as possible so no cancers will be missed. And with adequate positioning, potentially limiting additional radiation exposure by avoiding calling back patients for repeat imaging. The objectives of this tutorial is to provide a guide for understanding proper standard positioning and to provide steps and rationale for obtaining optimal screening mammography positioning. The standard views for screening mammography are as follows, the craniocaudal or CC view, and the mediolateral oblique or MLO view. Most technologists will start with the MLO view, and the technologist must first determine the correct angle of the receptor. Most of the lateral tissue on a mammogram will be seen in this view, so the receptor should be parallel to the pectoralis muscle, and the technologist should lift the lateral part of the breast and the pectoralis anteriorly and medially as she places it on the receptor. For the average women, the angle of the receptor will be between 40 and 50 degrees, usually about 45 degrees. For taller women, between 50 and 60 degrees. For shorter women, between 30 and 40 degrees. The technologist, as I stated, will lift the lateral part of the breast and the pectoralis muscle anteriorly and medially, taking advantage that the lateral tissue is one of the more mobile parts of the breast. At the same time, the receptor corner will be within the axilla, near the shoulder, behind the pectoralis muscle. As the technologist places the breast on the receptor, she utilizes an out and up technique, which optimizes pulling in posterior tissue and pulling out the inferior mammary fold or the IMF shown by the arrow. When the breast is completely compressed, as much posterior tissue should be pulled in on the receptor, including the inframammary fold, yielding a picture shown on the right where the pectoralis muscle extends down as deep as it can, at least intersecting what's called the posterior nipple line, which is a line drawn perpendicular from the nipple and the pectoralis muscle, as well as demonstrating that the inframammary fold is pulled out as we see below. This is an example of an inadequately positioned MLO view where the inframammary fold is not on the receptor and a lot of posterior tissue is not imaged yielding an image that we see on the right where the pectoralis muscle is too shallow and does not intersect the posterior nipple line and the IMF is also not pulled in. Another example of inadequately positioned MLO views, again, the pectoralis muscle is too shallow on both images and the inframary fold is not pulled out and we see skin folds from the 
abdominal tissue just beneath the inframammary folds. The craniocaudal view is the next step. The receptor should be at the correct height and the receptor should be raised to meet the bottom of the elevated or lifted breast, taking advantage of the more mobile tissue of the inferior part of the breast. Here we see the breast is placed on the elevated receptor and the technologist holds with one hand, steady the breast, pulling in as much posterior tissue as possible as the compression plate comes down. And at the same time, she reaches behind the patient and helps pull and relax that shoulder on the same side as the breast that is imaged. At the same time, the breast should be centered as shown here, nipple is in profile. Now the medial and superior tissue of the breast is the most fixed. So in the craniocaudal view, the technologist should gently turn the patient so the receptor is flush with their sternum, yielding as much medial tissue imaged as possible. This also may be accomplished by at the same time placing a portion of the opposite breast also on the receptor, helping to pull in that medial tissue. This is an example of the receptor being too low and the breast is simply placed on a too low receptor. As the compression paddle comes down, the more fixed superior tissue will be compressed and therefore excluding more posterior tissue. An adequate, I'd say almost perfect, craniocaudal views are shown here where we actually see the pectoralis muscle as shown by the arrows. Also, both nipples are in profile. However, the pectoralis muscle will not be seen in approximately 20 to 30% of craniocaudal views. To ensure that enough posterior tissue has been obtained, the posterior nipple line should be measured and it should be within one centimeter of the posterior nipple line on the MLO. If it's more than one centimeter, not as much posterior tissue has been imaged. In summary, screening mammography requires the best possible positioning to ensure as much tissue as possible is imaged to acquire the most diagnostic study. Understanding the steps and rationale for obtaining proper mammographic positioning Radiologists and technologists can work together to achieve the goal of optimizing mammography positioning and image quality. Thank you.